My name is Michelle Darnell, and I am the wealthiest woman in America. How wealthy am I? I wanted to come down on a golden phoenix, and I sure as shit did it. Hey everybody, welcome to What The Flick. Ben, Matt, Christie. I'm Alonzo. I did not do my due diligence this week and did not see the boss. Yes. You are fired. Sorry. What? I had to teach that night, uh, but you guys did. I was, uh, I was pretty sure this was a Bruce Springsteen documentary. I was very excited. Yeah. You totally stole my joke. Sorry. Do they I use the say, Diana Ross song? I don't, I don't, I don't, you, just, you want it? You just say it. This is not the 18-hour Peter Bogdanovich documentary about Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> much to Ben's dismay. Very disappointing. Thank you very much. Um, so Melissa McCarthy is the boss. This is sort of a takeoff on a, I don't know, I guess like a Martha Stewart kind of figure. She is this empire builder who goes to prison for insider trading, and she's an awful person when she goes into prison, and she kind of remains an awful person once she gets out of prison, but she also doesn't have any money or a place to live, so she has to pester her former put-upon assistant, played by Kristen Bell, for a place to live. This gives her an idea for a new empire involving brownies. Take a look. You're under arrest for insider trading. Michelle, don't struggle, son of a bitch! You're bankrupt. All your accounts have been frozen. Claire, get me a new lawyer. You don't have any money, you stupid ginger! Ah. Michelle, you need to get off the couch. Take Rachel to her dandelions meeting. Our troop came in with the $189,000. Holy shit. I object to parolees attending our meetings. If you don't get off my back, I'm gonna shove a box of chocolate clusters up that tight ass of yours. What is all this? This is my way back. We are gonna start a brownie empire and teach these girls real business skills. Don't call it a comeback! Okay, Crystal, what do we say if somebody doesn't want to buy? Buy my brownies or I'll kill you. Don't say that, Crystal. Hey, this is where dandelions sell. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Is burnt. It's not just Martha Stewart though that she's no. playing because it's like she? she's like Susie Orman. Right, it's like Martha Stewart and Susie Orman and Tony, Tony Robbins, Robbins, like all these sort of right. except, and even then the the preachers a little bit, like the you know almost and Joel Osteen a little bit. But yeah. I mean they, you know, she's got she's selling out arenas and it's a mm -hmm. show that she puts on, and people are into it. And she's this you know business maverick, but then she gets busted for insider trading. Yeah, so. Melissa McCarthy working with her husband, hit and miss, right? It's it's really tough. And she co-wrote the script with him, and they last gave us Tammy. Yeah, Tammy was terrible, yes. right? So I, I had this this notion that only Paul Feig knows how to direct her at this point because the the movie she has done, where she's really really been hilarious and outrageous and accessible and enjoyable, are, are the ones that he directs. This is just funny here and there when she's when she's riffing. When you get the sense that she's improvising. There are lines here and there that are just totally wrong and, and so funny. But mostly the, the stuff, the cohesive stuff, the actual movie, is just boring. And there's nothing to it. And I, it's I, not I didn't, funny at I, all. I, th I thought it was funny. Yeah? And I thought it seemed like like I was going to, and expectations play such a big role. But I, I, I felt like we were headed for Tammy and not Spy. And it, to me, it was closer to Spy than Tammy. It's certainly not nearly as good as Spy, but you but know, it's between those two. It was. It's definitely between those two. Uh, and 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 so I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny and also oddly sweet. I, I like. I I hated everything with Peter Dinklage, and, and as Matt knows, I would, you know, I'd lay down my life for Peter Dinklage. Yeah. But this was a silly, 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 demeaning, dumb character. Just describe who he is. He he plays a rival and former lover to mm -hmm. Melissa McCarthy. Uh, and he's become a rival and wants to take her down. He's the one who, who fingers her for the insider trading and, and sends her to prison. And then when she builds the brownie empire, is the question is, is he gonna steal that also? But there's a samurai sword, uh, there's a weird uh. East, Eastern religion component to it or Eastern culture. And kind culture. of a gay voice thing. And kind of a, maybe a gay voice and, and uh, he has a, it's just not, it's uncomfortable and it's like, She's an over-the-top character, but you have, to me at least, I half believed that her character, the boss, that that character kind of existed. They right. made it a little over-the-top, but there's a very funny teeth-whitening scene. Like, that amused me. And But that person existed. That Peter Dinklage character is not from this world. That doesn't, that's a Game of Thrones character. Yeah, and there's, <laughs> <laughs> if only, yeah, and there's just... 
there's a meanness that like crosses a line and it just becomes overbearing and not funny anymore. I'm thinking specifically of there's a fight that goes on between right. Melissa yeah. McCarthy and her brownie girls, and these girls were supposed to be like Girl Scouts. Yeah, it's and a, right. it's like this street fight. It's this brutal brawl in the middle of the street in like a nice part of Chicago. And, and it, it just, just doesn't it work. Crosses the line. Like, the tone just yeah. isn't there. I didn't think it's, it crossed the line. I thought it worked more than you. I think yeah. it ultimately didn't work. You thought it crossed the line? I just, I, I found it like unfunny and crass from the very, very beginning. I, I think know. it wasn't over the top enough. Yeah, I think, I, think they, oh, they, I think they missed on it somehow. Yeah. It I think it sillier. missed. It didn't, it didn't, I didn't find it uh, inappropriate. I just thought this, that it did miss. You yeah. know, there, that's, Mostly. there's a lot of that going on in this movie. There's a, there's a fair amount of jokes that work, but there's as many jokes and as many bits that just fall flat. And, we were coming out of the movie, and you know, I sat next to Leonard Maltin, and he brings up, he's like, "God, how do you end a movie on a goose egg of a joke like they do?" And I can't the last and joke. I don't want to spoil it, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, it's it's a callback to something earlier that also didn't work all that well. Hmm. And the it's you kind of see like, okay, oh yes, the star yes, and the director wrote this film, yes. and nobody's reining them in. And I think that that's one of the problems is that. You've got, you know, look like Ben Falcone is not the director that Paul Feig is. is Paul that Feig is. Yeah. Paul Feig, and and it's frustrating because like, all right, honey, I'll do your movie, sure. Right. Like, then who tells them no? Right? I think if there's a through line to the movies the, uh, that I don't think work for her, uh, and I would include Identity Thief Absolutely. as well as yeah. Tammy. Yeah, right. The movies where at some point she has to cry and like beg for love. That happens here. Okay. She cries well, and begs for love. That's, that's the thing. Both that, things. Because I think the best, because Paul Fee didn't have time for that shit. Like, <laughs> she comes out and she is herself and she barrels through and you got to get on her train and she does not give one fuck. And those right. are the best Melissa McCarthy movies. Mm -hmm. And the ones where she has to be all vulnerable and yeah. new, that's, that's no fun. Right. But you know what? I think, yeah, I think Alonzo, who didn't see the movie, makes a great point. He does. <laughs> <laughs> As but, usual. But because that moment, though, in this movie where she sort of you know begs forgiveness I I thought worked because it was much more subtle than in Identity Thief or in Tammy okay. and, and, and they're and, zeroing in on that with yeah her, right? and it really like, and like it's a very it's a very personal moment between a couple of people she doesn't actually have a big nothing happens that makes her realize it other than oh wait you know what I'm lonely I, I think I screwed this up and so her apology isn't gigantic and over the top there's nothing it's way less dramatic than I thought it would be. I kept thinking, oh, where's this, where's this awful, painful turn gonna come? And it right. just, and it, it's, it. They did it surprisingly quickly, and I thought, sort of honestly, it was one of the things that I actually didn't dislike about. Okay. I think part of the problem is she sells that those moments too well, right? Like, she's really good at at being these extreme, over the top characters that you're that are hilarious to watch, but then as an actress, McCarthy can pivot and make you feel real. Kind of empathy for these characters that she sells that the characters maybe don't deserve, okay. and yeah, it kind of sh makes the character less believable, right? Like in a weird way. Like the shading want, doesn't work. Uh, the shading <laughs> doesn't work, right? It, like Spy never does that. Spy, she's this kind of badass that she gets flustered from time to time, but there's never that breakdown moment. And it's it's like with the characters, like I want to see, you know, you don't get that breakdown. In bridesmaids, either right, like or that, the heat, or the heat, or heat. right? The like, heat she softens; it becomes more human, but it's but she's earned, all, right? It's earned, yeah. And that's the thing is, I think it never really gets earned in these movies, mm -hmm. and and then it's never consistent. It's like she just goes back to being the hard ass anyway, um, and that's frustrating. Like there's there's you want to see her do, you want to see her do more consistent, yeah. better comedy. I want to see Peter Dinklage pick better comedy scripts. <laughs> right, he can like, be funny. He's funny. He's in dating Elf. Gwen Stefani. No. Yeah. No. Really? I think I they think were both yes. on SNL, but I say that with uh, with fourteen percent confidence. Okay. All right. so we're gonna know. look that up yeah. for you, so we're not reporting but wrong the, things. The, the, here. Weird, the weird thing about McCarthy's career, though, is that so often, you know, especially in comedy, somebody is, is in a hit, and then they do a bunch of movies where the person making them doesn't really get what makes that person tick or what their best qualities are. And she's making movies that she's co-writing and her husband yes. is directing that don't get what her best qualities are. Is it just like she's too close to it because her husband's the one directing it? I don't know, what, I don't I don't know, know. what it is. Or too much time in the sitcom world. What did I fall for that made me think Peter Nicholas was dating Gwen Stefani? Like, I don't know, but that's April a great Fields. idea. You watch Saturday Night Live That's an amazing idea. Yeah. I love it. Also, we should mention really fast, Kathy Bates is in it very briefly. 
Um, not a lot to do as the woman who is the business titan who is Melissa McCarthy's mentor. Yeah, I mean, the, the costumes are kind of hilarious. I'm an idiot. Um, I liked it. <laughs> for, the record, for the record, Gwen Stefani, Peter Dinklage, not, not dating. dating. They're probably, they're probably, you heard it here wait, first on not, what He's probably married, has three kids. Not no dating. Idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what are our numbers then, Ben? Uh, 6.2. Okay. Four. Yeah. I'm saying 4.7, so our average is a five. And, and, and a <laughs> And it turns out Peter Dinklage has been married to a lovely woman, beautiful woman named Erica Schmidt for like maybe ten and a half years. Peter Dinklage yes. not having an affair. And you with just got him in hot water. Exactly. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, tomato meter? Seventeen percent. Pretty Ooh. low. It's a terrible week. Bye.